bitch. We've been rolling, oh, we're rolling bitch. bitch. Yo, we just turned after class from ghetto production to like, is it kind of ghetto? No, it's not no, even kind of ghetto as all. As, we professional. As all, as all, bitch, this elite. <laughs> we're elite this productions now up in the, the building. Say what's Hold up. On, I'm still eight. trying to set this fucking alarm, bitch. I'm slow. Okay, you got to set the alarm because it's just me and Jazz today. Shout out to Sis. She's not here with us. She is. I Bam. Think, thank you. Welcome. She is on her way back from where? Where did she go? San Jose. Oh, San Jose. Mm-hmm. Oh, for Nicole's family. Mm-hmm. 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 Shout out to you, Sis. We love you so much. I so it's just you. me and Jazz today. If you're just listening, y'all, we going to get into some things. We don't even know what we're going to get into. But, did. you know, Jazz is a butt. You know, she. let's see if she takes me out this time. Damn. Um, we have Isa. Isaac in the building say what's up? Hey, this is our engineer. Come on, Isaac. Hello. Ooh, the lady. Do it again. 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 Hello. I need the hay. Do it again. Oh shit. Isaac, why don't you tell? Why don't you tell us about yourself? Like for the people who are listening, because Look at his fucking face. He said, "Bitch, you threw me in quick." Right. Sorry. You know, I'm really, I'm so into this podcast, and I love recording new episodes every single week. It just gets us, it gets us together, it gets us talking. You know what I mean? And there's so many subjects to dive into, and. I'm going to need an engineer, bitch. I'm going to need somebody to get us right. And the person to do it is Mr. Isaac up in the building. Say, what's up? Hey. Hey. So, Isaac, can you just, you know, give us a little. Oh, cool. You've been like working with sound. You've been working with sound. I don't. I didn't even know that you've been working with sound. Like, this is this is your world right here. Yeah. Like, dance is our world. Mm-hmm. Isaac, the audio, period, is mm-hmm. your world, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, a two-minute background is I started when I was, like, 14 recording okay. songs. Mm-hmm. I got my first studio job when I was 16 mm. in uh, Florida, mm-hmm. working with Tom G and t- a label called Team Fetty. Okay. Um, so I worked with a lot of, like, early Florida artists, early dance music, Tally's Familiar. Uh-huh. Uh, and went to college for music, all that good stuff. And as I continued, continued my education, I still perfected my craft as a, as a sound engineer. And Damn. then um, once I... But I was kind of only doing like a lot of music stuff. And then once I graduated college, I was like, oh, I need to expand my knowledge. Mm -hmm. Um, Also to sit with other people. Right. Right. To be uh, equal on the board. Because I'm Mm -hmm. kind of I'm very skilled and I'm very young and I'm black. So that's a problem in the tech world. You get what I'm saying? Mm. So um, but yeah, but I mean, it's been great. So but yeah, you can throw me in pretty much any kind of situation that deals with audio professionally. And I can. Well, bitch, people, people who are listening said we needed you about episode. We needed you episode one, bitch. (laughs) (laughs) One episode, we can only hear Leah. Couldn't hear sis or Jazz. One episode, we could hear sis. Couldn't hear me or Jazz. You know what I'm saying? So I didn't realize podcast is about listening, bitch. And uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's about listening. No, and I what, it's the fact that you just caught on to that, sister. I know. I know. <laughs> it's because I'm so used to being on camera. camera. I'm so used to the camera. So uh, anyway, I didn't really give in, give much thought. But point is, we're here, everybody. We're here in a like a professional studio with mics. You can hear us. You can hear Y'all, you can hear elite. the bubbly booty. <laughs> okay, here's can, the thing. I'm still drinking those protein shakes. Still fuck y'all. Um. <laughs> Yo, you took me out last episode, Jazz. My stomach was on fucking 10. Oh, God. Um, We got sis up in the building. Say what's up, A. I we mean, Aaliyah, up, whatever the fuck your name is. We got Aaliyah up in the building. Say, say what's, what's up, A. a. We got Jazz, Jazz up, up in the, the building. building. Say what's, what's up, a. a. We miss sis, but she ain't in the building. Say what's up, A. a. All right. Let's get it popping. Um, So we're going to catch up. I just came back from Atlanta. Yeah. We, Tyler and I, blasted. Took yeah, Tally, Tally and I took a quick trip to Atlanta for some family stuff. And I got three new tattoos, everybody. Let's see, let's see what they said. We got so well, trust your vibes. So first, so the back of my arm, it says, no, sorry, we start with the left arm. Trust your vibes. Okay. Energy never lies. Okay, run it back. I mean, run the story. Um. Okay, well, no, first it started off with this butterfly right here. Oh, she's cute. Cute, right? Okay, what's the butterfly for you? So, I don't know. I've just been... Huh? Oh. Flexible, beach. <laughs> Come on. So, basically... Huh? What'd you say? Oh, it's fine. Shit. You you guys will see it. For all of my diehard Aaliyah Janelle fans, just make sure that you add these three new tattoos on the list. They be knowing. They know how many tattoos I have, bitch. Anyway, so I'm a, I'm a fan of getting spontaneous tattoos because 
I don't know. I'm just a fan of spontaneous things. Do you have tattoos? No, I'm clean, baby. For real? Yeah, I want to be tatted, but I just haven't done it. A bitch scared of me. Yeah, no. I've just used to be that child that always like drew on myself. I did too. For, and my you mom would slap the fuck out of me. Right. Why I you got all the Sharpie on you? <laughs> If you look back at a homecoming picture, bitch, I'm going to pull it up on my phone. It's so ghetto. I have a full ankle tattoo with a Sharpie trying to hide it right. from my mama. And she was like, this is so fucking ghetto. I'm not purchasing this shit. But I liked putting things on myself. I don't know what it is. So I've just been, attra- I've been attracting butterflies. Like butterfly. If you think of butterflies, you can see that you'll see them fly, but then they're gone, bitch. They fucking vanish into the air. But butterflies have been landing on the floor, like right next to me, right next to my fucking foot. And they'll just like flap. And I can just see every single detail of that butterfly. And for the people who are listening, if you don't, if you know what butterflies symbolize, I would like to know. Ooh, um, I thought she was going to hit it with the, hit me with the fat. No, don't I don't know. Like I don't change. know. The fucking, huh? Do they symbolize change? Symbolizes change. It probably symbolizes growth like or yeah, shit. growth and and transformation, oh, okay. evolution. I love that. I'm I don't know what that, I don't. Why? I used to be scared too. My bad. I'm no, not like, going to act like that. Fucking ter- like butterfly exhibits. I'm then leave. Why? Bitch, they're so leave. beautiful, yeah. and I think they're good luck from a distance. <laughs> Keep it cute, and especially if they land right where they landed for me. It's just crazy. So I wanted to get it tatted because I was like, bitch, if the universe is bringing me all of these butterflies, then it just must mean something. So yeah. let me get that tatted. Love that for you. Bitch, you keep looking at my motherfucking pimple. I People don't. who are watching, I have a pimple right here. We got pimple in the building. Say what's up. First of all, ain't nobody was even looking at your fucking pimple. I it's on your, the right. I see your eyebrows right looking sun. up. I Am I looking at your, can I examine you, bitch? Like, what, you want me to soul search into your fucking corneas the whole goddamn fucking time? That's weird. I don't fuck with you like, hey. Don't look lose at contact. the pimple. Let me see. I don't see you. <laughs> Wait, come back, come back, come back. What you want me to look at? Look Are you a person who eye- holds eye contact? That's fucking weird, bro. I you do- eye contact ass bitch, like, whole conversation start to finish? Yes. Oh, no. What? I gotta look around. I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> What? You're dead ass? Just don't look at my pimple. Uh, okay, which one? Look at your earring or something? Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. No, look no. at the earphone. Look at the professional tech. I'm that's really around looking this. around, the, like in awe that we in this. Okay. Boof. If you guys are watching, anywho, I have a blemish that I'm very. That's normal. That may be self conscious about just a little bit. So I have a mustache. Don't comment. Yeah, I have a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, anyway. Right, we rocking, we rocking our natural faces today, okay? I have a lash on. All done up. Y'all already know how we feel. We this is the real, real of the queens after class, bitch. Yeah, anyway. I'm dirty. Okay, let's 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 what's up? So how I got been? huh? Oh, you're still on your tattoos. Still on my tattoos, but that's okay. Um, got the butterfly, just so y'all know. And then I got two phrases on the back of my arms. Like I said, I think I already said it. It says, trust the vibes, energy never lies. And that's just something that I full heartedly believe in. You guys take with it what you will. Um, But energy is like the main source of everything. Everything has energy. And and I think the, the better you get to reading people's energies and the energies of a room or the energy of... A piece of art, I, whatever. Everything. Yeah, everything. I think the better life will be. Honestly, I don't know. Can I get an amen? Ooh, ooh. Can I get an amen, bitch? See this? Is- amen. <laughs> I'm just saying. I just. Saying. <laughs> this is why I need sis here. Sis would have said amen, bitch. Amen. Isaac, say amen. Oh, please, for the Lord. Amen. Ooh, shit. Oh shit. That was a little <laughs> sinful. On, <laughs> that, was, yeah. that was not godly. What's been going on with you, bitch? Let's not get into you. Thing. Catch me up. Catch me up, bitch. Last podcast I was on FaceTime with some boy beforehand. Mm-hmm. Not anymore. That was Dang. quick. Four days. In and out. Bye. What happened? Not shit. <laughs> Dead ass. <laughs> That's how it be, huh? I'm a lot to handle. Mm-hmm. And then there'll always be the people like, I want all the smoke. I could take it. And they'd be like, ooh, that video you just posted like was a lot. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, oh. Isn't that what made you DM me in the first place? Right. So I'm confused. Dang, so you only be talking to a guy for four days and they're already complaining about what you be posting? But bitch, you followed me off of Instagram and DM me. So clearly that attracted you. And now you don't like that shit? Make it make sense. No, ja- mm-mm. we can't be talking to these people, period. Oh, yeah, my phone's on D&D. Yeah, good. Okay, bet. Okay, what else? Um... You started work? Tell the people where you work at. Ew, no. You don't tell. Okay, you don't have to tell them where. I mean, people pop up. 
For real? There were flowers left on my car yesterday. <gasps> like, not ew like that, but like, what? You know who they from. Come on. It must have been that guy that fucking, it must have been the um First the guy that all, she was talking he to. Was in South Carolina. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up, y'all. You know, Jazz. Y'all have been trying to hook Jazz up. Bro, since y'all episode thought one. this was blackpeoplemeet.com. Like, hey, they trying to hook you up. Sometimes the people behind the camera is like, they really are ones. Instead of the people who are just in front of us, like in our lives, I think these people have us way more than the people around us do. Um, so maybe you should take le- take a listen, you know? They get to know us, they get to know what we like. You know what I'm saying? I think you should listen to them one day. Not them sending me their cousins. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. cousin Trey. Cousin Trey might be cute. <laughs> <laughs> cousin Trey might be cute. I'm sweating, bitch, because... What do we got to lose, Jazz? What do we got to lose? My sanity. Uh, <laughs> these niggas drive me the fuck crazy. <laughs> Y'all. You gotta open yourself up, Jazz. Is this a therapy session? I'm ready. Yeah, it is. I have a lot of walls up, you guys. If you want me to be fucking transparent, a bitch has been through a couple things. Mm -hmm. And, okay, let's let's be for real. Okay. (laughs) Come on, let's be real. No, okay. So, when the the fuck did I come over? Uh, Like, May? Okay, Mm -hmm. I come over a lot. Mm -hmm. That was vague. Mm -hmm. And ugly cried. Ugly, ugly cried on the. Yeah, she gr- did. She did. I haven't seen her in a little bit. And on the she gray came couch over. before for the transition. Yeah, she came. And over one day. I was in a little situation entanglement, and mm-hmm. y'all sent me him. So again, fuck, that- <laughs> fuck y'all to a T. Yes. Okay. So he do these little fucking YouTube reactions. Oh my god, I'm so giving away. No, we don't. There's yeah. so many people. Yeah, but they know who the fuck. Okay, okay, okay. If you're listening, we're being gen- I'm, we're being I'm in sorry. general. I'm, okay. I'm gonna keep it cute. Okay. Long story short, he hurt my feelings. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, it just didn't work. And during that time, Rona hit, and, and so a lot of things were changing in my mm-hmm. life, and we just didn't see eye to eye on a lot of things. But I didn't realize how many things I was harboring from past relationships. Okay. And a lot of trauma started to reveal themselves mm-hmm. uh, along with other things you know obviously the world's fucking changing i'm supposed to go on tour this and the third mm-hmm. so a bitch was the fuck sad mm-hmm. um but i was just i i took a lot of steps back mm-hmm. and i was like there's a big difference in just letting time heal all and actively participating in your growth mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. being okay right with, with sitting and, and being sad because bitches ain't had shit to do i couldn't go to class right couldn't go to school couldn't yeah go to there work. was like kind of no way of ex- expressing no, bitches was in the room or just or distraction because like, distraction is good during going that time through things yeah and it was just it was very eye-opening and i really thought that i was okay because you know you start to have happy days and then someone comes in your life and like bitch right and bitch then got you forget her group back mm-hmm, yeah and mm-hmm. it's forgetting mm-hmm. not healing and and it was an eye-opener that i'm not healed because mm-hmm. certain things would trigger me and i'm like why the fuck am i so mad this is some stupid ass shit you mm-hmm, feel me like mm-hmm. feeling like i need to have control over things and Oh, super exposed, but like a lot of, um, I'm a very uh, aggressive, dominant person. I think we talk about that a lot. Mm-hmm. But a lot of men will be like, "You are just like you're the man." They're in intimidated. This relationship. Yeah, absolutely. And that it didn't hurt my feelings, but it made me be like, "Oh, like I'm not trying to make you feel less than a man." And right. I, and I need to find a balance of yeah, you, bitch, match yeah. my energy and level the fuck up. Right. If you right. can't handle me, because that's what I want to just look at and be like, right. That's a that's a you problem. Boo, right. If if I'm making you feel away, and also understanding like, damn, like let this motherfucker cater to you. Absolutely. I don't do well with that. Finding the balance. Yeah. So can y'all stop looking me up? Because clearly I got a lot to fucking do. <laughs> Literally nowhere near where we need to be, bitch. Because... So okay, but where are you right now? For the people who are listening, where are you right now? That was then. It's been maybe like a, t- a month or two, two, three, I don't know, something like that. Where are you now, now that you fully know that? Because sometimes people will know what to do, will know what they have to do, will know where they're trying to get, but they just can't won't do get it. Wit- and they won't That's do it. They won't up- I would love to say there's a lot of growth, but let's, let's, <laughs> let's be real for the people. There's been none. Um, no, there okay, has. Okay. There has. None, none is selling myself short. Stop doing that. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yo, it takes a little bit. No, it takes. A, it's, it's hard. Not, it's not something that's gonna happen overnight because you have been so like 
habit. It's so hard I to went, break I away from habit. Mm-hmm. Like my first boyfriend, Jasmine, like people would call me sweetheart, sweetie, happy. And it's like, you're just so sweet and fucking happy and shit. And then it, this is going to turn into a relationship talk, bitch. That's okay. Bring it. Y'all want to know? People need to hear it. Let, let's, let's really expose the fuck out of my life. So my first relationship, that man cheated on me, put hands on me, had a baby on me, asked me to be the godmom, like, mm. of, the, of not my child, mm-hmm. his child that he cheated on me with. So that at 17 and then first moving out of your home and then going to college, you're, like, mind fucked. Okay. Like, I've, I've never been away from home. I've never been by myself. And right. so here I am trying to figure out how to be this adult because I've always had this mindset, like, once you go to college and once you're out, it's you. Right. I didn't need to think like that, but that's just how – how my brain worked and then from then on it was just just life lessons one after the other because I've never had to heal like that Mm -hmm. I've never had to tap in to me and and what I've gone through and so there was just toxic relationship after relation okay not not like that but Mm -hmm. like just talking to people entertaining people and letting them into my life Mm -hmm. and not really protecting my energy the way I know how to now Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um I lost my train of thought No, we're just talk, we're just doing a um kind of like a, just a background. Oh, relationship background. You were in college. You've been in toxic relationship after toxic relationship. Oh, my one eighty, uh-huh. and I I got bitter. Mm-hmm. I got bitter and I got cold and I I was like fuck it. I'm just gonna put all these walls up because I'm tired of getting hurt. Right. And after I mean, which is I'm sure what a lot of people does, and it makes sense. It makes so much sense. Go but ahead. I'm also like a firm believer in like if you're gonna get to know somebody, like you can't half ass and you can't tiptoe because how are you really gonna let them Absolutely. see what you have to offer? Yeah. You so gotta. you're either gonna jump in and really fucking try, right? Or you're not. And so that was part of my thing too. It's like I'm just gonna like inch into it, and then I ended up hurting myself more. Mm. So I try to keep it cute and play it cool. Like, no, mm. like, what do you want to do, Craig? Mm-hmm. And it's like, no, bitch, I'm trying to be your wife tomorrow, and you're trying to fuck. <laughs> and we're just, like, not on the same, same page. page. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of girls, like, young college girls, they're like, I don't want to, like, make it seem like I'm coming on too strong. Yeah, fuck that, bitch. We don't be have direct. Time. And, yeah, we, and don't have be, to, we don't have time. No, be intentional. Like, yeah. dead ass. Like, this is what the fuck I'm looking for. The man, that you're, the man that's supposed to be in your life is going to appreciate exactly. that. Exactly. He's going to appreciate the fact that you know what the fuck you want and you're not about to waste no time. So the people who are listening and the people who are watching, if there's a man or there's a woman that you're interested in, you know what I'm saying? Respectfully, Mm -hmm. let them know, bitch. Come on. Well, it's a disservice to yourself. It's 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 totally a disservice to yourself. Yeah, don't lie to yourself and don't waste your time. Like, I mean, if you want to play those games, you want to be in high school again and, oh, I want them to text first and did it. Like, now listening to it, because I definitely used to be that type of woman. For sure. Like, Like, wait for him, bitch. She's going to come to you. Wait for him. Nah, bitch. Ain't talk to you in two weeks. Look at you. Sad. (laughs) (laughs) Right. You but that's real. Like, be let's be adults about the situation, and then if it's a no or if it's not what it's supposed to be, you move find out within two days. Don't find out within fucking years, six of months your investment exactly. And the only yeah, so but that's that's mm-hmm. um that's where that's where a lot of that came from, and, and just trying not to come on too strong and being scared. Um, but now that I'm. I was about to say grown, but I'm still childish. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good mix. Now that I'm older, mm-hmm. um, it's just being honest with myself mm-hmm. and understanding like. You, you and said, what does that mean? What does that mean being honest with yourself? Being honest in the fact that right now, currently, there are there are men pursuing me. Right. And they're saying the things that I would love to hear just as like this deep emotional cancer. Like, I want to be married. I want to have a family. And they're like, I'm going to give you the world. You're not gonna pay bills let's travel and it's like Mm. damn that sounds cute but the growth where the growth comes in is like bitch i'm not ready for that so let me not even try to force myself is that what you want though the things that they the things that they're saying that that's what you want ultimately like to be married have a family like i don't need a man to just cater to me left and right and i don't have to touch no bills like it sound cute Mm -hmm. but at the same time it's don't settle for something because you're lonely and because you want to feel some love again and i'm trying to to have that void be filled by me and not mm. because someone's saying that they'll do it for me. Mm-hmm. And that has been a habit mm-hmm. of when I'm feeling lonely and like, ooh, bitch, got some attention. We're mm-hmm. going to ride this wave. And then it, it just leads to disappointment because at the end of the day. You got to find, this is what, this is how Tally and I became so successful. And I think, and I think for the people who are listening and watching, you got to find your f- and you gotta yeah. find your home boy, bitch. No, dead like ass. it's not That's even. Important. I, I, I don't need like if Tally wasn't in the picture or whatever. 
Like for me, knowing what I know now, I don't need to hear all of the fluff. I don't need right. to don't hear all that. Me that. Can we shit. hold a motherfucking conversation? Period. And can we talk about different things from around, like intellectual conversation, mm-hmm. spiritual conversation, mm-hmm. fucking bullshit conversation? Like I want to know that I could talk to you about all of that shit. I want to have my like man relationship, like my homegirl relationship. Exactly. Full transparency. Yeah. I can come to you, say some shit, not be judged. We can yes. argue like, bitch, I love you. Yes. People and then go the- so hard for their friendships. And I right. noticed that like, we could have a little tiff or whatever it is and be like, bitch, this is dumb. I love you. Right. L- let's push past it. But then when right. you get in relationships, people be like, it shouldn't be like this or, or too soon. It's like, damn, mm. if you can fight for your platonic friendships, why can't you mm, mm. put forth that energy? You don't have to give up so fast. And I feel like people view, mm. sometimes at least, people view romantic relationships as more temporary because my person would never do this. Mm-hmm. My, my person would, would never just argue. It's always something like, maybe we just need to learn how to communicate to each other. Absolutely. You, you, you wasn't this motherfucking close with your, your best friends. It took time. It took growth. It took understanding Mm -hmm. and you're not willing to let that go so if you're going to invest like that in in your friendships invest like that in your relationships and to solidify that foundation of your homeboy or your homegirl right do you think um do you think our dads play a big part (laughs) (laughs) answer too quick bitch okay now we get into another damn subject you go first (laughs) um i do believe that uh a woman's relationship with their dad plays a big part in their future relationships you know um Mm. loving wise and what you want what you're kind of looking for in a sense too or what you're attracted to what you're not attracted to what not to to look for but you know what i'm not even gonna play my daddy like that because my dad the thing, so a lot of people don't know about my dad because I don't really put him on social media. And once when I did, I don't know if you saw that story that I posted, but I started working out with him because he's yeah. starting his own workout business, y'all. Mm-hmm. And I'm really proud of him. So I decided to work out with him and it was really cute. And people can see the energy between us. So yeah. for me, like growing up, me and my daddy's relationship was amazing. He was my coach. Like he was, he was the hero. He was oh, the I one that, that put me into like, you know, softball, gymnastics. Like right. he's the reason why I'm so athletic. He's the reason why I'm so competitive because mm-hmm. he was always he was the type of dad where it was like be the best Same. or sit down, bitch. That's how my dad was. Don't be sorry. Like that's the fucking yeah. those are the words. Don't be sorry. So like anything that I do, sometimes I get a little bit insecure because I feel like I'm about to be sorry. I feel like I'm not about to be the best, and it's just it wasn't acceptable. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, but just. As a re- just my dad, my dad never never married my mom. Mm-hmm. They divorced when I was four, and I think listening to my mom, and I think I really have to get into this with my dad, but I don't know if he's the best loving partner. I don't think he's the best boyfriend mm-hmm. or husband, and maybe maybe he's different right now because he's gone through a whole spiritual transition. Like right. I, even, he's lost weight, he's changed his diet. He's like Found watching himself. different things, listening to different things. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Like this was not the dad that I grew up with. His energy is still the same. Yeah. But you know what I mean? And um, him as a partner obviously is something that I'm never going to experience. But that's the that's the part. Yeah, yeah. We're never but, gonna ex- experience what our mothers experienced in their encounter with yeah. our dads because that relationship is so different. And right. And it's like you have the vision of your dad as daddy's little girl, and then when you get older, you're like, I peeped that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you start to view them in a different light. Mm-hmm. And that's where things started to change for me. Cause it was like, mm. you're not, you're not daddy. You know, like mm-hmm. it wasn't, it wasn't that you start to pick up on little traits and it's like, interesting. Mm-hmm. You've been like this your whole life. You've been like this my whole life. This right, 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 okay. right. Okay. Right. And I think that starts to play a part in, in what you're looking for. And then you go back home and, and you kind of look at the dynamics between your parents. And it's like, do I want that? Mm-hmm. Do I not want that? How mm-hmm. is this going? And, and it's, uh, it, it, I don't think it's ever, in t- I know parents don't just expect to influence their children. Like they're, they're not, not, maybe not as aware of how much we soak in mm-hmm. or what we go back to. Mm-hmm. But that was definitely a big thing for me. Like a lot of my triggers in relationships come from your dad what doing I've it to your mom. Home. Yeah. Oh, Granted, wow. And I, I try not to point the finger and fault because I have to understand that me and my mom are very different people and whatever their dynamics are, are going to be different. However mm-hmm. they clicked and however they connected and been married for 30 years, it was something. They're mm-hmm. still together. They're, they're living their lives. So their right. attraction I'm is like, their clearly, attraction. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm like, Just because I don't like that, I try not to fault my dad for it because if Shelly cool with it, Shelly cool with it. Right. Jasmine, on the other hand. Right. 
then leave. I'm going to cut you out. I'm going to cut you out because <laughs> what the fuck is you doing, my nigga? Like, right. huh? That's so interesting. But it, it did play a part. I, I did. Do you communicate with your dad about no. how he is no. as a partner and as a, and as a husband to your mother? Would you? I, or would you be open to? I lashed out. I've lashed out. That was, I had one time where I just said some very hurtful things. And it was one time. Um, and we never talked about it. That's one thing that I do want to be able to, like, if you guys have seen me and my dad on, on my story, my personality and it my looks goofiness so fun. is my father. It is so fun. And it is. Her dad looks so fun. He is. He's very, like, that was my dad, too. The sports, like, the the aggression, the the dominance, all that, that is my father to a T. Mm -hmm. And we have a great time, but the way we communicate is polar fucking opposites. Mm. I'm, like, the black sheep in my family. I went to school to be a fucking therapist, communication studies, all that. And he's very much so keep it in. So when I want him to express and I'm looking for that. A lot of guys that, are, a lot of, are like that. Yeah. Are the keep it in. Keep it inners. And I, Isaac, you a keep it inner? Mm -mm. You communicate? Oh, yeah. oh, oh shit. shit. <laughs> Come on. That's good. All right, ladies. That's, that's, that's number two. His voice, voice. is great. <laughs> He's a communicator. <laughs> what else you got? Green eyes? Shit. Green eyes, right. Hazel. Hey, Hazel. Hazel? Yeah, Hazel. Look at me dead in my eyes. I Look. can't. Oh, the way the light was hit is green and hazel. <laughs> it's multi, multi color, like, multi colorful, we, bitch. You might like, dang, we want to see what this Isaac look like. No, you gotta wait. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have an episode where we reveal what he looks like, but um, y'all gotta keep listening though if you want to get to know Isaac. If you really want to. Okay. Anyway, yes, um, 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 so your dad is a keep it inner. Yes, and is my dad? No, he's not. Listening to my dad's stories growing up is what helped me gather the knowledge that I have now. It wasn't necessarily me speaking. It was just me observing because I wanted to make sure if I came to him to talk to him, I wasn't speaking out of anger. I wanted to come with more of an understanding. Good. And the way he grew up, he was saying his dad was very in his business, very much so like, what are you doing? Where are you going? Who are you with? Would barge into his room and always want to talk. And my dad didn't like that. So he was like, when I'm a dad, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let my parents come to me. So that's how his parenting style formed. But for me, I didn't know it at the time, but for me, I would have preferred a kick my door down and be like, talk to me. Mm. Granted, it was not with, with malintent or, or to fuck me up as, as a, an adult because he didn't know. He was doing what he thought kids wanted. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's where parents operate. Like, I'm not going to be as strict. I'm not going to do this. And you don't know the cards you're going to be dealt when you have a child. Mm -hmm. And it's yeah, just, I, I really believe that you're not, you'll never be ready to be a parent no. until you are an, a, a parent and you're learning and parenting at the same time. So I can right. only imagine that. And you don't know how your kid's going to turn out, what personalities they're going, because I'm not 15, 16 year old Jasmine. Mm. I'm a brand new bitch. <laughs> it's definitely to Tony and Michelle to be like, <laughs> you pop pussy on Instagram. I'm yeah. definitely confused because you grew up doing ballet and now times have changed, bitch. your ass cheeks are out in every pit. <laughs> Have they really said something about? Yeah, my mom be like, "Did you have to hump the floor?" I'm like, "It's floor work. Dang. It's art." But I mean, they're cute with it now. Shelly be all up in the comments. That's okay, baby. Right? Shake what your mama get. But That's my mom's my party is. like that too. Like my mom mm. will like come to a party and like throw some ass and twerk with us. She'll mm. play beer pong. Like my parents are fun ass fucking people. Mm -hmm. But there's always more to people than just having fun, right? So I think that's just what it was. I needed my dad to... Wait, what you say your mama come to the party and do? Boy, keep it cute. <laughs> <laughs> keep it cute, Isaac! <laughs> Isaac, that was oh, perfect. Oh, fucking dead. That was so perfect. He said that he wasn't going to pop in. He uh, popped in at the right time. Quick. He said, your he mama said, what? What, <laughs> what did Shelly do? Okay. What's her name? What should I call her? Shelly? Shelly. Oop. Hey, Shelly. Shelly. Um, yeah, I just, I wanted more of a dominant male figure. So now when I'm in relationships, that's what I kind of crave. Mm. So that's what I noticed between the dynamics You know what I think that. my dad is, and I think a lot of people, I think a lot of women deal with this in their relationship, or maybe that's, this is why they become so like, so closed off is I think my dad likes to be in control. My dad mm. likes, he's like super, super masculine mm -hmm. that like he needs to be the king he mm. needs to be needed he likes to teach he likes to let you know what life is gonna be okay you go, you about to be my you're gonna be my woman okay i need you to do this and da, 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 da. this is the way that i do things and this is how it's gonna have to be for a child it's almost like the perfect it's almost like the perfect like middle ground because obviously i'm gonna listen to everything he has to say right. i'm living under his roof you know what Period. i mean so it's like 
he almost had the best of both worlds because I appreciated and loved him. He was my everything. Yeah. And then he was able to still control me. But it's interesting because for me, it's like I needed that because obviously I'm his child and right, I became right, right. this person. But for a woman to get into that and expect to, you know, and, and need everything that a woman needs from a man, like you can't just don't be my dad. Be my fucking, be my lover. Don't be my dad. You know what I'm saying? For yeah. me, yes, I'm your motherfucking child. Right, right, right. But when dating. Parent me. Mm-hmm. But for a woman to get into that. So for my mom and for all of the other partners he's had, I can see why it hasn't worked because maybe he's tried to be their dad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I so for men that. who are, for men who are, does that make sense, Isaac? Do you, do you kind of? Yeah, I mean, I think if I had just to, to hear in, from a, just to hear from a guy's yeah, point of view. Be- yeah, talking mean, some bullshit? No, no, no. I don't Period. think it's no. It's not bullshit. Um, <laughs> Let me know. I think it's so. I spent a lot of time like I was with my high school sweetheart for a long time, mm-hmm. and then I spent a lot of time single, and then through that time, I developed my kingship. Right. So what I mean by that is, a lot I of like times, that. we, you know, I have two loving parents. You know what I'm saying? We're still together. I'm blessed. All that good stuff. But a lot of times, if you are raised by a king and a queen, you will accept nothing less than a king or a queen. Right. But in our generation, a lot of times what happens is like we date somebody who is a prince or a princess. Mm. Meaning that they can look, they can have every they can have all of the uh, all of the jewels of the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? Mm. But mm. not really not really know how to um take care of the kingdom. You see what I'm saying? So for me, it's like Bitch. there's a lot of girls that, you know what I'm saying, our age that are princesses. But they're not queens yet because a queen wow. can run the empire. A queen can run a business. A queen can, wow. can can patch up a piece of wall. And I, you get what I'm saying? So yeah. like like my mom had me in a in the back seat of a car wow. at twelve thirty five at night with no ambulance. What? Wow. And delivered me damn near by herself. Wow. So I, so my take is like, I'm not worried about you cooking dishes. Like, do you know? Do you have skill sets? Like, have you traveled? You know what I'm saying? It's a little mm, deeper mm, than mm, that. So mm. I think it's, I think we have to kind of start to define, like, what a king is and what a prince is. Don't mean that they might necessarily be, like, a bad person or whatnot. They just haven't arrived yet up mm. here. You, mm. get what, you get what I'm saying? The potential. The potential. Right. And that's the problem a lot of times. Even men, like, we date potential. But... Example, no, like that's you, real. You, you that and, is so real. You, you see you the and, bigger picture. You and Tally had to meet on a certain plane before y'all came together, mm-hmm. whether you knew it or not. You yeah, know what I'm saying? I agree. Subconsciously. Yeah. And that's how that works. But like if you're dating a prince, he going to show you all of the good stuff, give you all of the give flat. Give all that's the what princes, That's what princes do because yeah. guess what? Right. Because he's the not king, there. He, he yeah. ain't up there Ooh, taking care of I the actual red, castle. Just read like a book. <laughs> right. So, I mean, so that's just my take on it. And that's, I mean, I had, you know, Mm-hmm. Personally, I'm not gonna say nobody names, but you know it was. Oh, she I was, was a princess. Like, yeah, mm. and and couldn't and when it came down to really holding up herself, you know what I'm saying? Her own X Y Z things that you got out like priorities, you know what I'm saying? All of that. It's mm-hmm. like, you know, a what happened on social media does not equate to what's in somebody's bank account thank all you. the time, or, or their grind, you. or their effort, or thank their you, you, desire. You get what I'm saying? So for me, it was Absolutely. like, okay. She could see my potential, but not realize that I was already a king, been a king. You see what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Her bad, I mean. Oh. Yeah, her bad. Oh. Hey, on to the next. I just feel like every single every single person that you guys will run into from this point on is the next step closer to yeah. the person that you're supposed to be with forever. Yeah, I agree. So, yes, I love that. Don't be a pr- I mean... I think you need to appreciate where you are in life. I was about you know to what I'm say saying? that. If you, if you know you're not fully there yet, be okay Yeah, with and it. just like how you that. said. Yeah, just I'm like how there. you said. Right. I'm not walking, walking in all of that, and I had to almost, I'm going to use the word forgive. Forgive myself for, for being mad at where I am at. Mm-hmm. Because I always saw the bigger picture of what I did want, and it does put into perspective when I am the only single friend out of my friend group, but I'm starting to love that. I'm starting to appreciate that because my growth is my journey. I'm stubborn as fuck. I learned my lessons slow, but now I understand them. Mm-hmm. 
it, it, I'm not just playing a part and I'm not faking. I'm understanding it for the growth and it feels better for me. Yeah. To be able to look at those situations where where you do see some potential in somebody. Because I'm the queen of seeing some potential. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, ooh, what you said sounds real cute. We'll mm-hmm. get there when we get there. Mm-hmm. But that's just real empty boo-boo. Mm-hmm. Just sound Put good. into action. Yeah. yeah. That's what, and that's what happened with homeboy, the one who I ugly cried over, it was this big, oh, I love you, you're this, you're such a woman, you're this, that, and I was like, and I was in a great place in my life, mm-hmm. and at at the time that that was, the place where I was at was, I was on my shit, mm-hmm. I was in my fucking bag doing what I need to do, very focused on myself, um, oh, um, and then the, the empty promises and painting the bigger picture and then not being able to step into the potential that he thought he had mm-hmm. almost fucked me up even more and it made me go into a place of insecurity. Mm-hmm. But then also had me realize that I'm not really where I thought I was either. Mm-hmm. That there should be mm-hmm. no reason why that took me down. Mm-hmm. If I was really where I thought I was, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then him doing that would have been a him issue and a him issue only, only. And it became a Jasmine issue. Right. And I got sad and I was crying and I was insecure. Interesting. And then I... I would, I would feel fat, I would feel ugly, and I would be, like, just searching for validation from him. Mm-hmm. And he would look at my videos and be like, that wasn't the one. And I would be like, damn, I thought I fucking killed that hoe. Mm-hmm. Like, neighbors know my name? He was like, that wasn't it. I was what? like, that was, was a good ass routine. You. Right. You had a solo, didn't you? Yeah. yeah. Insert clip. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yo, man, your man is going to love everything that you put out and is always going to find the good. Even if you could correct me. No, and yeah, once I, and, you know, he'll be able to let you know what it is. But not tell me If you ask for it, yeah, and just know the difference. I think a king doesn't have to be told what to do and he doesn't need to, he doesn't need to learn from the queen. You know what I'm saying? Like, Mm -hmm. he's going to actually, naturally already know what to do. He's going to know what to do in situations. He's going to know what, how to communicate. He's going to know how to surprise you. He's going to know how to make love to you. He's going to know yeah. how to, you know what I'm saying, uh, uh, um, nurture you when you right. need nurturing. He's going to know when you're just being attention. a brat. He's going to know when you need to be hold, held. He's going to know all that shit just from, exactly. you know what I mean? And if he's not giving that to you, people who are listening... <sighs> Then I think you got a prince on your hands, beach or a princess. And same thing go and same thing same goes for women, for women as Absolutely. well. Like you to be a queen, you need to know how to take care and of it. Step a king. up for your man. You know what too. I'm saying? Yeah, and step Very up for your much man. So partnership. Um so back to dads. I think dad I think it's just different in this in this day and age. My dad is definitely a king, but it's like you gotta make room for your queen. I don't think I don't think he's made room for a queen. He's just too much of a king and he kinda just is like He's so used to doing things on his own and ruling his kingdom on his own that he doesn't want to make room for somebody to rule with. That's a whole other situation. Good guy, but you know what I mean? It's, it takes both. Where do you think your dad is? Do you think your dad is a king to end this off? We're at 40 minutes. Okay, okay, five more minutes. Got it. Yeah, I'm closing it out now. Um, I mean, as I was always a daddy's girl. So I'd love to say from that perspective, yes, He's a my, king. my dad is a king. Um, for a while... I don't know. I don't I don't want to say no because that's my dad. Yeah. You know what I mean? But at the same time, like like I said, I, I see things and I know I, I, that shit won't fly with me. Mm-hmm. But whatever my mom needs, because my mom's a ve- my mother is a very strong person. Like when yeah. I look at my mother, Queen. that is what? Yeah. What that is like the, the best example for me. Yeah. Um. I, d- I really don't know. Yeah. He, he's he's a king to me because that will always be my father. But there are just right. some things that he does that wouldn't fly with my needs improvement. Everybody needs, yeah, you're right. Definitely Everybody. some communication. And you know what I think? You know what I think? I'm kind of like getting to know when I'm I'm accepting is that I want to be able to be a teacher to my parents. Just because they're my parents doesn't mean that they know everything. Like as Our as, as is a different. child, yeah. As, generations are different. Resources are different. Information is different. Seriously. Things are coming to light. Things that you guys haven't seen because you were, you know, whatever the situation is. So I think as a child to like to be able to speak to their parents and maybe let them know, hey, it's not just this way, but there's also this way, too. And maybe you should try to take it up as a parent. Sometimes. But then we get into stubborn parents where it's like, nah, bitch, I'm the parent. You're the motherfucking child. You know what I'm saying? So. I, my parents are good at that. I feel okay. like I'm able to present a lot of things accepting to my information. Parents. Just accepting information. Well, look what information. we do. Yeah, you kind of have to be accepting yeah. with things like that. We don't right. have traditional 
careers, like I said, my mom was very confused at first, but mm -hmm. they're very accepting, very understanding, and willing to learn and grow with us because the relationship with us as their kids is more important than what their values were to them. Mm -hmm. And so if that means adapting and changing with what we do and how life is going, they were raised off of their parents' values, and their parents' values is what, goddamn, right. 1950s, 1960s, whatever the fuck it was. Right. That ain't 2020, 2015. Right, it right. Is no Nine day. Generational thing. Nine day, bitch. So they're like, oh, look at this new world. Look at look at what we can expose ourselves to. And even my grandparents. Mm -hmm. My grandma's like, I saw you on RuPaul's and, and doing all this. But then you look at like that time frame and it maybe wasn't so accepting of drag queens and, and things oh, like absolutely. that. And now they're just yeah, so way into it and love it. And mm -hmm. we were able to teach that, even if it was non-verbally, mm -hmm. because they were willing to look at their family and the bigger purpose of keeping the family together and loving unconditionally, mm -hmm. that that was the teaching process. Mm -hmm. So... How about just to end this off because I kind of want to I kind of want to talk to everybody. What about for girls who didn't necessarily have a father figure, who don't necessarily have a father figure or, you know, kind of like that that full household? What would you say? I personally just think it depends on the person and how like I said in the beginning how much of an active role you play in your growth. Cuz yes, and I'm sure fucks people up mentally I can only I feel like I had an absent father at times even though he was there mm. he would go months on end without speaking mm -hmm. so I in some sense I had my own quote-unquote daddy issues to deal with mm -hmm. but everyone's gonna have their shit how do you heal how do you grow are you trying to make connections are you trying to be a better person mm -hmm. it'd be dumb and very ignorant to say that it doesn't impact anybody period mm -hmm. because it does absolutely it 100% does but that does not defeat you or define you mm -hmm. and you do not have to grow up this broken person because you're lack thereof or whatever you can always be in a place of abundance right maybe it might take you longer maybe it might take you fine. longer and a little bit more experiences a little bit more lessons to come but it's not like it's just done and over with right you know what i mean but i think the number one thing is accepting that you may have you know an issue or that you may have a problem accept that and then kind of just go from there instead of trying to fight it and trying to like resist it your stories like that's story. your stories are sorry it makes you who you are absolutely so embrace that shit embrace that shit and you know surround yourself with the people that make sense and that make you feel good yeah. and try to find that balance so anybody that we're talking to i think i think what it is is being a queen and a king being a queen and a king and, you know, um, finding your partner is having balance first within yourself. You know what I'm saying? And then finding another person. Damn, that's, I had a question for Isaac, like but we're ending. Can I talk to you after then? Have a question? No. The question I, was, do you feel... <laughs> interview. Ahead. So in terms of this, this queen and... Qu queen and king? Thank you. Queen and king stuff. Do you feel like it's a destination or a journey? Like, can someone just... Sorry. Do you have to just be a king and queen like you just reach your potential or can you be a queen where you're at? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Like even though I, I know that I'm I'm healing and I'm doing these things, but can you still put this this queen energy energy with on, on where movie. I'm at? Or do you feel like, yes. no, like you still need to grow, you still need to be there to be a queen and you're gonna be in a state of potential until I think it X, Y, and Z. I think it it just has to come with transparency and being genuine. Yeah, what queen do you need at the time? It. What 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 like okay. What level of queen does that king need at that point in time? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think for Tally and I, we were we both had the queen, the queen and king energy. Like, bitch, we knew what the fuck was going on. We knew who we were. Yeah. If that other person decided to run up on the, uh, you know, run around on that other person, we fucking knew. It's like great. <laughs> right. We didn't need that shit anyway. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, but I do believe that men just, you know. So I was real quick. I was reading this book it's called The Way of a Superior Man, right? Mm -hmm. And it talks about um, men, even if you still have your father in your life, you should make decisions as if you don't have your father in your life, mm -hmm. right? And so it's just it's just about, I think, for a man specifically, really being in a certain place mentally mm -hmm. um, and life-wise mm -hmm. before you even really know how to recognize a real queen. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I, I, think it's, I think just maybe for the guys, it's a little, it can be a little more, a little deeper because usually – men are the one that are chasing women. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. it's very easy to get kind of, oh, 
It's everywhere, you know. Yeah. It's like everybody in the queen, you know. Yeah. So I think no, it, but Jess, it just I, even though even like we still have so much to learn, and even though yeah. I may have it all together or whatever, and we're just maybe on different levels when it comes to our relationship. Like just because I'm about to, you know, marry somebody, there's still so many things. Like now, now I'm entering this marriage world, and I'm trying right. to navigate through that and how I'm going to actually be a wife. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm stepping up. Talia is stepping up in his own way, yeah. um, but. You're I think you still have, bitch. You, you wouldn't be around me if you didn't have queen like oh, bitch, energy. It wasn't about me. It was just a quick. Uh, okay, just I was like, about to no, say. I'm, I'm just kidding. But, but you know what real. I'm saying? Me, just a you. General mm -hmm. outlook right. on on what that means. Because just because you don't have all the answers yeah. and everything lined up, that right. does not not make you a queen. Less than. I, yeah. I just don't want people to think that like, damn, I'm just not. Because it's easy to be like, oh shit, I'm yeah. not there. Right, I, and right, I'm you're right. There, but it's okay to be at the place you're at and, and yeah. love yourself where you're at and still consider yourself a queen if that's how you want to move yeah. and what you're trying to do. Speak that upon if yourself. If you just own it, if you just yes. own where you are all right now and, and not everything. resist it, yeah, and accept all of your flaws and accept where you right. need to go and all of the lessons that, you know, you still need to experience, that's still being a queen, accepting Absolutely. that. You know what I mean? And the way that you go about things. But that was a great ending. Yeah, Love that was that. a little great conversation. Come on, how to be a queen. Come Period. on. Period. I'm sweating. Um, that had me spicy. That was very uncomfortable. <laughs> bitch. I know. I'm Just fucking dripping. Y'all don't even want to see these Vulnerability armpits. is a Oop. thing. Oh, timer. Well. Um, with that being said, you guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode of After Class, this professional episode oh, of After bitch. Class. We elite, bitch. Ghetto Productions to elite. Remember, guys, go to Full Out TV if you guys want to learn a couple steps. You know what I'm saying? You know, we started off in the dance floor. And now we up in here in the studio. Oh, but okay. we, multi we want to give you guys a cute little discount. So just go to Full Out TV. Pick a video that you want to learn from. Type in after class to let us know that you guys have been listening and enjoy and enjoy a cute little discount from us. Full out TV. This was after class, the Queen's podcast. We love y'all. See you next episode. Bye. Mwah.